Yes, the would I lie to you? Carol Vorderman, Janet Streetwater, Omid Jalili, Russell Howard, Ken Livingston, Clive Anderson, Miranda Hart, Reginald D. Hunter, Terry Christian, and their team captain, Lee Mack. And facing them tonight, Jamelia, Stephen Mangan, Claudia Winkleman, Marcus Brigster, Fern Britton, Davina McCall, Joe Brand, and their team captain, David Mitchell, and your host, Rob Brydon! Good evening, and welcome to Would I Lie to You, the show that rewards the ability to deceive. Mark Twain said, if you tell the truth, you don't have to remember what you said. Well, Twain, I just write down my lies and keep them in a file. <laughs> then colour code them so I can see who I told the lies to. <laughs> then I have them cross-referenced with another file in case I meet someone else who might have heard the lie. <laughs> And I have the files maintained by a full-time secretary in my lie library who's on call 24 hours in case I need a spreadsheet of the lies to be emailed over. <laughs> and so, to round one, home truths. <laughs> Carol, you're first up. Please reveal all. On countdown, if I worked out the number puzzle before the time was up, <laughs> I used to play a little game. That's where I've seen you before. <laughs> so, David's team, what do you think? What, what, what little game? Um, well, on the numbers puzzle, you know, you used to do that and press the target yeah. and the number and then the target. And then there's would come a time up. limit. And then there'd be 30, so you had 30 seconds to do something. Yeah. Well, most of the time, I'd get the answer before the clock started, so I had 30 <laughs> seconds. Before the clock started? Yeah. <laughs> what I used to do, I used to get my pen that I would write on the board with, and I used to go round all the props boys, and I used to make them tap the end of my pen, and how many could tap the end of my pen in 30 seconds was the game. <laughs> so, how many props guys, props guys, were required in the production of Countdown? <laughs> Joe's been on Countdown a lot, so you know how it, we have uh, someone like Harry or Vince or Stan who do the water Carol, pouring. Carol, 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 and then Carol, Carol, we had. Oh, yeah, had. <laughs> uh... Tap a pen! Yeah. Right, <laughs> They're probably sat there. <laughs> Was this not distracting to the poor contestants who are trying to do some maths if out of shot? Uh, slightly out of shot, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I feel sorry for this, uh, this new girl that's doing the, doing the numbers, cos all the props guys must be going, oh, you'll have great fun on this show. <laughs> they would have said to her on the first day, are we going to play Touch the Pen? <laughs> and got fired for sexual harassment. <laughs> we always played Touch the Pen with Carol. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I'm just not like that. <laughs> David, what are you and your teammates thinking? Well, what I doubt is whether you would be allowed, when the contestants are trying to work out the math, to run around the studio getting men to touch your marker pen. <laughs> so we think it's a lie, I think. I think we, we do, okay. yeah. What a surprise. OK, Carol, is it truth or is it a lie? It is... <laughs> true. Oh. <laughs> well now then. Oh! <laughs> And do you know what? It actually is lots of fun. <laughs> so, you seriously did this? Do you know when I was being really cheeky, I'd take the top off and then they all got dirty fingers? <laughs> <laughs> I think you just like to behave outside of society's rules, don't you? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised to find out you're an enthusiastic dogger. <laughs> The D in my name stands for delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, why? Well, it was the late 60s when I was born, 1969, and uh, black men my age around that time being given names like Reginald and Winston and delicious because... <laughs> 
because uh, at that time in America, the affirmative action had just started. So black women saw an opportunity for their children to get more jobs. So what they did was we we'll give him a name that will enable him to be, you know, recognizable yet dignified to potential employers. And... Delicious is dignified. Well, I mean, you have to understand how th it's, look, it's a little different in the black community than it is in your white world. And... <laughs> Like, the name Delicious commands great respect in the, in the ghetto. Uh, <laughs> you, uh... You probably don't listen to much rap music, do you, Fern? Mm -hmm. Uh, there's, uh, MC Delicious. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Big Papa Delicious. French Golden. <laughs> <laughs> Where did Reginald come from? Uh, Reginald is a German name. It means mighty or wise power. And um, delicious means uh, very tasty. <laughs> uh, what was your father's name? My father's name is Homer. And what was his middle bit? He didn't have a middle name. No. Um, uh, he grew up in the 30s and 40s, and it was a very tough time for black people, and he couldn't afford a middle name. <laughs> and do you have brothers and sisters? I do, indeed. And what are their names? Um, well, there's, there's Brenda, there's Kathy, there's Oliver, um, there's Scrumptious. Um, <laughs> I don't think people would have thought that calling you delicious would help you get jobs. <laughs> except, except as a food. <laughs> well, I think, shall we say it's a lie? I yeah. think that's what we're yeah. going to feel I stupid think I'd be when it's true. That. So you're saying it's a lie? Yes. OK, Reg, is it uh, the truth or is it a lie? It is a lie. <laughs> I won a junior one-man-and-his-dog event when I was 14. <laughs> As the shepherd or the dog? <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you grow up in the countryside? Nope. So how come you got so good at, you know, <laughs> manoeuvring sheep and sheepdogs? Oh, is things? that what it is? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Because this was like one man in his dog. I, well, I was just I was gonna ask you like how what did, did you think it was? Tell us what you, what thought do you think it was? it was. I thought it was one man and his dog just being judged <laughs> 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 No, I did I, sorry. I didn't know what, what, no, is, what, it? It, what is it? What is sheep herding? Yeah, yeah using a dog to come to, by come by all of that. that all that <laughs> you've, you've gone from novice to expert yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You had to take it over hurdles through, like, different, you know, like, round and run. You had to look after it. It had to be well washed and everything. <laughs> That's <laughs> dog agility, mate. That's not... <laughs> yeah, well, it's not... I've just been to do a crush, then. How come I haven't won? It's well washed. No, I mean it... <laughs> I can't do more than wash it, can I? <laughs> so there were no sheep involved in this interpretation of the one man and his dog contest that you were involved in? <laughs> no. Sounds like no you prosecuted sheep. a Welshman. <laughs> 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 was it inside or outside? Well, it was outside, funny enough. I, I, I don't know, I've never been to one. Did you say that I should inside? know? You've yeah. never been to one, but you come by, come by, come by, come by. <laughs> Were you very keen on dog grooming? No. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't? On the internet. <laughs> so you... <laughs> Me? Yeah, I'm a three-year-old puppy as well. <laughs> <laughs> no. I wasn't keen on dog grooming. Well, how did you end up in this competition where you might have to make a dog do weird things if you weren't keen on looking Be after Because I was involved in a youth club. Mm. All right, what was the was youth club? Was it one of them, like, you know, for not young offenders, but kind of... <laughs> 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 no! I think this is a lie. I think it's an absolute lie. He, he didn't train the dog. He, there was yeah. no sheep. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> I, I also think this is a lie. Well, I think we're, we're unanimous. Oh, you're <laughs> saying that it's a lie. Terry Christian, were you telling us the truth there, or were you telling us a lie? Well, sorry, lads. Oh, it's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> of course it was a lie. The last time someone found a sheep in Manchester's city centre, the locals thought they'd captured a cloud. 
Now, for David's team, take a look at this. Right, somebody's phoned up. Yeah. Somebody called Dave, asking mm. if we've got any sales jobs going. Get him in. OK. Sometimes an individual can make the difference. Look at Julius Caesar, Hannibal, not Lecter, but Hannibal, <laughs> the commander. He made a difference, didn't he? Defeated the Romans, and he was an individual. Well, this bloke could be the same, and we've got to get him here to listen to him, see what he's got to say. See? OK. You tell him it's an introductory interview. OK, we want to find out a bit about well, you. We want to find out what then. kind of personality you are, There's what makes number. you tick. Yeah, I'll phone him now. Hello, is that Dave? Um, oh, sorry, someone's given me your number, but I think it's the wrong one, mate. Well, I'm so sorry about that. Let's see if he wants to sound right. No, he don't sound right. <laughs> The Armstrongs there, showing the kind of decision-making that can make the difference between failure and abject failure. <laughs> well, here's the related fact for David's team. When interviewing office staff, Simon Cowell asks every candidate to give him ten uses for a kettle. The idea came to him after a Harvard professor, that's the University in America, Lee, told him... <laughs> told him about the type of questions they ask applicants during the university admissions process. Mm. And he decided to ignore those and just to ask about <laughs> a kettle. No, this is one of the ones. This is Apparently this is one of the ones, cos it makes you think on your feet. Well, there's almost nothing uh, that you can't believe he'd say in order to try and seem in some way different or interesting. Um, <laughs> he depresses the hell out of me. Yeah. <laughs> that failed audition for The X Factor still, still rankles, doesn't still it? Still rankles, yeah. <laughs> This is how Danny Minogue got her job, isn't it? Because she really impressed him with an unusual use. Because she uses the kettle to melt down a face and remould it every morning. <laughs> so, David's team. I think it's a lie. Lie? I, I, you've swayed me, it's a lie. We'll go with lie. David's team are saying it's a lie. I can tell you that it is actually a lie. <laughs> Mick Jagger has been asked by a company if they can sell his ashes in collectible egg timers when he dies. <laughs> they offered Mick Jagger, and it seems too good an opportunity to waste, Mick Jagger, they offered... Uh, That's good. They, uh, it's not up there with the Ronnie Corbett. I'm not going to say for a second that it is, but it was worth an airing. But what would Ronnie Corbett sound like if he was singing a Mick Jagger song? Yeah, good <laughs> idea, good idea, go on, go on. <laughs> I can't get no satisfaction. <laughs> <laughs> an Australian. <laughs> it was an Australian. <laughs> Don't try and look like you weren't pleased to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> David, time to uh, make a decision. So we're going to go with true. You're saying it's true. Mm. All right. Uh, well, let me tell you this it is true. <laughs> Please welcome this week's special guest, Sadie. So, Lee, what is Sadie to you? This is Sadie. She's my children's nanny, and the first time I met her, I ran over her foot. <laughs> OK. Omid? Uh, this is Sadie, and I employ her to massage my dog. <laughs> uh, that's not a euphemism. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And finally, Janet. Sadie came to my 60th birthday party, pretended to be a waitress so she could lick Daniel Craig's plate. <laughs> so, there we have it. <laughs> David's team, where do you want to start? Can I just check? Do you know Lee? Uh, have you been to his I, house? I, I, I can just about remember his name. <laughs> Wouldn't you know his nanny? No. Okay. Can I, I because can... if I knew Lee's nanny, I'd either have gone, that's Lee's nanny, <laughs> She's my children's offer. nanny. I'm not a complete moron. <laughs> She's not my nanny. Uh, now, this is running over the foot business. Yeah. Uh, that was the first time you met her. Correct. Uh, and the circumstances were? Uh, I was in my car. <laughs> 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 I 
and she was on the driveway. Correct. W what happened immediately after the foot running over moment? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Forward. Ow! That was my foot! <laughs> well, you see, she's laughing quite a lot now, as if, like, I have to laugh, he's my employer. Yeah. <laughs> but this wasn't, as it were, how you met her. You didn't run over her foot and say, you look like you might be a good nanny. <laughs> it was the first time she'd arrived at the house. I hadn't met... I'd never met her before, because so, so my wife... Your wife had interviewed her and Yeah, and I said... can finish my own sentences. Yeah, yeah. I'm really good at it. <laughs> um, my, my wife had, uh, had, had interviewed, actually, you're correct, yes. <laughs> Why do you have to get your dog massaged? Uh, that... First of all, I, it's, it's my kid's dog. We've had the dog for about seven years. Uh, th they wanted to get a masseuse because of uh, arthritis. It's a spaniel. We've had it for seven years, so in dog years, it's about 42. So it's quite early, and I didn't want to pay for a masseuse, but it killed the dog. Couldn't somebody else learn to massage instead? It's a, very it's it's a highly skilled thing. It is, uh, it's about £35 a session. And how long are you going to have to do it until the dog... Uh, I don't... We don't know. It may, it may be indefinite. You know you can have a dog put down for 30. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Janet, can I just check? Sadie came round to your house. She pretended that she was a waitress. She wanted to lick Daniel Cl Craig's plate and you didn't just chuck her out and go, you are completely weird, you're leaving. No, I don't care. Well, she, she was not... There was a lot of people at the party and Sadie yeah. was at the party. Oh, Daniel Craig was at the party. Yeah, a... Sorry, so Sadie was, a, was invited to the party? Yes. The waitress act was in order to gain access to the plate? Yes. I'd, so what I she did is instead of approaching... I through to... the uh, ins and outs okay. of it. I was Why being. Not? I was, because it was my bloody birthday. I was getting trashed. I was having a good time. Like anyone ill tonight would do. <laughs> you know, just because you're 60, love, doesn't mean you can't, you know, get off your trolley. The question is <laughs> why do you think that Sadie, instead of using her position as a party guest to talk to Daniel Craig, which is legitimate in a party, I think you'll right. agree. Go on, I'm really him. getting all my wit <laughs> now. <laughs> do you want some? No. Have you met anyone famous in your career? <laughs> really famous? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> if you met Daniel Craig, could you actually speak? No. There you go. She's right. <laughs> Sorry. He's hot. Are you going to walk over and stand there in answer to every question? <laughs> <laughs> we're, all, we're all a bit scared now. Yeah. No. It... Hey, I'm most scared cos I'm closest. <laughs> All right, we need an answer. Need an answer. So, uh, so David's team is Sadie, a nanny whose foot Lee ran over, Omid's dog masseuse, no. or a plate-licking pretend waitress at Janet's party. <laughs> Janet absolutely did couldn't look at Sadie when she walked in, and I thought maybe that was because she really had licked it. Embarrassing. Just an odd thing. Bit. I mean, I'm leaning. Uh, I think it's Omid or Janet, and I'm leaning towards Janet on this one. Right, I'm going Janet. Okay, well. Let's go, Janet. You're saying Janet. OK. Uh, Sadie, would you like to reveal your true identity? Yes, <laughs> I pose at a waitress. Yes, I clear <laughs> Daniel Craig's face away. And yes, Good I licked it clean. <laughs>
As a child, David's grandparents' house did have a little bell that he would ring if he wanted anything. Ding-a-ling! Uh, could I have a posher upbringing, please? <laughs> If you give me any date before the year 2000, I can instantly tell you what day of the week it was. Bollocks. <laughs> the... Is this something you learn, or is this a kind of, you know, Rain Man type thing? No, no, I had to... That's, well, I had to learn... You learned how to do it? Learned the system. What's, what's, what's the, the system? system? The system is, uh, what you do is you actually just learn... <laughs> <laughs> trying to think of a system. And what you're clamping for is you, you actually just learn what day of the week every day is. I can't go back to, like, 14 BC, right? <laughs> right. But I can, I can do it right the way back to the sort of 1920s, 1930s. <laughs> and what you do is you learn a midway, so you learn the 19... You learn one particular point in 1955, three months in 1955, you learn it off by heart those 90 days. And then there's a calculation that you can do to plus what or minus. What's that calculation? Take a day, one of them, your, you know, your expert period, the, right. around Suez or whenever it yes. was. Well, you have to give me the exact year, otherwise it'll be too well, different. Okay, answers. I, I don't mind. Right, the 14th of May, 1955. Well, hang on, 14th of May. Tuesday. 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 Right. And so, how do you extrapolate from your knowledge of that to go back to the 1920s to the 23rd of June, 1927? It's dead simple. Yep. It's seven. Hang on. To the power of two. <laughs> right. Then you take away 10% unless right. it's a leap year. And is it a leap year, 1955? Uh, of course not, you idiot. That was 54. Uh, no, of course. Okay. This one year, this one's year that is 55 a leap year. <laughs> Seven to the power of two. <laughs> seven to the power of two is 49. Minus, minus 10 percent. Ten percent. Four point nine. So you got seven, forty-four point one. Correct. I was going to say well, that's, that's not a day of the week. That's I haven't 40. done it yet. It is. is. Forty-four point one. Then you, you round it up Thursday. or round it down, which is forty-four. Key of the door. Twenty-one. Two and one is three. Sunday's the first day. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> oh, so David, lie. <laughs> You're saying it's a lie. OK, Lee, are you telling a lie? Of course I'm telling a lie. <laughs> I have told my children that every time they lie, a puppy dies somewhere. <laughs> now you've used this line on the children, has it actually stopped them from lying? Well, it certainly seems to have done. Yeah. Because they do care about puppies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit of a relief, actually, that you're saying that didn't result in your children telling loads and loads of lies and getting excited by the prospect of puppy death. <laughs> it's heartening on that level. No, I but... don't have sadistic children. <laughs> but it's also bad advice, cos what if a dog goes to attack them and they tell a lie and the dog still gets them? <laughs> actually... That's <don't> the nearest. <laughs> the well, nearest <laughs> dog will die. So you just... You know. <laughs> well, statistically, you'd hope... Yeah. By osmosis, the lie yeah. will dog, kill... You tell the lie, yeah. dog death spreads out from yeah. you till it finds a dog, the dog dies, and then the wave of dog death stops. Can I just ask Joe, why a puppy and not a kitten? She's not sick. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was a difficult decision to make. It was a toss-up between a kitten, a puppy and their dad. And <laughs> kind of puppies are the sweetest. What is your verdict? My team say true. You're saying true, yeah? yeah. OK, so, Joe, is it true? It's a lie. Oh. It's a lie. Oh. oh, possession. Ah, now, there's a box just behind the stage there, Claudia, if you'd like to get the box. Hold on, bear with me. Uh, take out its contents. OK. In here oh. is my pet cat from when I was little, and my dad had her stuff for me when she died. Oh! <laughs> here she is. Oh! <laughs> Can I just pop her on the desk there, Claudia? <laughs> What's she run over? <laughs> this is Coffee. 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 And um, she was my most loved, loved pet, and she died when I was 14. I could even get upset about it now. Yeah. And. How did I... your. Go on then. <laughs> <Why> did... <laughs> 
and get That's upset. It. Did you, but did you want to exploit her on a light entertainment panel <laughs> show? <laughs> Did you want your father to stuff your cat? No, Once but I was died. so devastated, I was so upset that she died. My dad, as a present, uh, gave it to me, uh, all stuffed, and she came to my wedding. Sorry, sorry, came to your wedding? <laughs> I think, I think Lee, not of her own accord. <laughs> was well, she a bridesmaid and came down on a trolley? No, down no, the no. Aisle. <laughs> I just don't believe. Claudia, even in Claudia's world, which I, which I love. I love your world. Mm. However, this is a step too far. I just yeah. don't believe. Yeah. Well, that's... Yeah. that's pretty convincing. Yeah. <laughs> it's talking to her now. Time now for Lee to make a decision. She looks like a very lovely but slightly unstable woman, and I'm going to say that that's true. You're saying it's true? OK, Claudia Winkleman, is it true or is it a lie? It is indeed a lie. Oh, oh, so oh what a shame. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lie. I have made a CD of the sound of my kettle boiling, and I play it every night to help me get to sleep. Lee's team, is that possible? <laughs> why, why would that help you get to sleep? It reminds me of my grandmother, because we were always caravanning when, she was, when I was little, and she'd be up all later than me, and the kettle would be just boiling on the gas stove, and I could hear that little hiss and whistle in the bubbles. I had it done for me by the sound people at work. Mm. You really? absolute like You're trying to tell us. <laughs> All I'm picturing is a man now with his big things on going like that in a... <laughs> yeah. In five, four... <laughs> yeah. I don't know how You're lying do in bed with your husband trying to get to sleep yes. and you put the sound of a kettle <laughs> boiling. And he's alright with that, is he? I go to bed earlier than he does because I have to get up at five. Right. For so, work. To switch the kettle off. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried sex? And plus, to get to sleep? When, when, have, I, have you tried sex to get to sleep? Yeah, because Ken's got a good technique if you want to try it. <laughs> what do your kids say about this CD? They think oh, it's weird. No, they're they. Put up with it. You no, know. you're lying now. Kids <laughs> think everything is weird. No. <laughs> if I'm really, really tired, I'll go upstairs and they will already have put a hot water bottle in the bed and the tape, the CD on the thingy. Oh, goodness, you're just off the scale. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lee, what are you going to say? I'll say it's a lie. You're going to say it's a lie? OK, Fern, reveal all. It's... A lie. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is a lie. If Fern can't get to sleep, she just rings Philip Schofield and asks him to tell her about his time in Joseph. <laughs> Again. <laughs> oh, and that noise signals time's up. It's the end of the show. And my individual liar of the week this week is Fern Britton. <laughs> yes. Britain, whose gigantic whoppers were as beautifully showcased tonight as they were on her 2003 Pilates video. <laughs> Good night. <laughs>